Hello guys, welcome back to another video and this time we're bringing back the cold one for a really special video. So recently, on January 7th of 2019, my boy cold one became the first Iron Man in the entire old school RuneScape to complete a insane challenge, much harder than something like the Inferno to be honest, and that is soloing Theater of Blood. Alright cold one, show us what you got with this analytical uh, video so we're basically going to be going through this from the beginning to the end we're going to show you his successful run uh, we're going to move over to the discord so take us along for the ride right now cold one yep so this is the standard gear setup i did at the bank ignore the uh the low brew stack the low angler stack and other stuff in there ignore all the supplies that are basically zero so standard i set up that i took uh kind of changed a bit from what mooks and exact and Letu had been taking. Uh, instead of f taking five super combats, I would just take four so I could add an extra brew into the mix. Whoops would take Dragon Claws, I dropped that for another brew. Uh, five super combats, 14 brews, and whatever amount of purple sweets I had at my disposal. Alright, so the first fight being Maiden, not really much changes to this except you're the only one doing it, so Freezing Nalo just falls on you, but you have to keep her mechanics in mind while doing this fight. So, so you're I know notice me switching quite a lot. Into Kodai Wan for no particular reason. I'm not freezing anything. I'm just putting it on as her attack comes out. And also putting it on the Elijah Spirit Shield to reduce her auto attacks. So she puts out one attack for every time that you put out two Scythe attacks and it stays on that timer. So it was kind of just easy to remember what track you were on and when her attack would be coming out. So her standardized auto attack is the Black Tornado you see flying out at you. It will reduce one of your combat stats once in a while, depending on what your highest accuracy is. And there'll be a couple of pictures you can put up on screen showing what my equipment would look like for certain times. You'll see me put on Kodai and Elijah right there. That puts my magic stat at the highest, so she'll be lowering that. And I aim to get that down to like 98 before I just put on the Elijah Spirit Shield by itself. And at that point, she'd start reducing my melee stats. You see I hit 98 right there, right down there. So I'll only put on the Elijah in there. So now she'll start reducing melee. As you see, it's syncing up with when the first set of Nalo comes out. So another thing to keep in mind when you're doing pretty much everything, all the six rooms in the theater is supply management. That's the biggest issue, because you want to have enough to go into Verzik, otherwise you're not going to be able to complete the run. So a good goal for me in Maiden Room was to use only three brews. I'd still accept using four, but anything past that, I would just talk to the Vire Watch right outside in the hallway and just reset and start a new run. Because you can't really negate her damage outside of Elijah and Spirit Shield. She doesn't work like normal monsters. Her attacks kind of operate the same way as Calphite Queen does. Where it doesn't pay attention to your defenses at all. It just rolls damage. And that's it. So, this is the only way to mitigate it. So, so wearing Armadillo will do literally nothing compared to wearing Bandos. Yeah, it's a mechanic damage. So, your defense isn't like mm -hmm. going to play a big factor. So, yeah. what was your strategy with the uh, blood clubs? Like, you know, how many would would it take to spawn before you say, forget it, let's just start again? Um, usually about like three or four, or if there's two that are just being troublesome and kind of just walking around the front set circle right here, or square. If they cover this path, you can't fight the maiden. But if they're acting like really, really terribly and just misbehaving, then you kind of got to clear them out. Uh, one thing to point out that's going on right here, anytime I drink brew, I make sure it's at a point where I can drink six doses and benefit from it, because I only want to drink two doses of super combat in this room, total. That's part of the supply management I mentioned earlier. Yeah, you set a quota of how much you're willing to use per room. Exactly. So that would be the quota for this room. Three, four brew doses I'd still accept, and whatever amount of super restore would take to offset the brews and two doses of super combat. Maybe three, it depends. Because you can kind of get away with using 3 to super, super combat in here, but I prefer not to. But it just makes the other rooms a bit slower. So the one that's going off to the northwest right there, I kind of just ignore. I'm not going to bother putting on my gear, because if I do that, then I'm going to continuously have my stats lowered while clearing it out. Uh, one time I don't mind taking them out, which is the time I'd like to do it, is right before the Nilo Clumps spawn, that I'll have to brew for afterwards I've cleared them. So this is one of those right here. We're at about 40%. Clearing this out isn't a big issue for me. And you'll notice I take off the Ancestral Pants as well. That's so she can reduce my melee stats. So that my magic stat is not going to get sapped here. And then I won't see those spells magically just turn off. Like, oh, you don't have the stats to use them. 
Yeah, you want to have that barrage pretty ready to go. Yeah. yeah, and as you see, the rest of the fight here doesn't matter so much. It's going to be under 30%. There's no more Nilo spawns, and I'm just going to drink the rest of my brews as much as I can. Let's skip ahead a little bit to near the end of the fight. And my supply usage looked like it was, yeah, just three brews and one super restore. Pretty textbook maiden. Nice, and nice. And I preserved my super combat doses. <clears throat> so they're all there, only use two. Yeah, two doses of fight for that one. Yeah. And we can skip ahead to bloat. Uh, the only change here for this room is during the time when he's like walking around in the circle, you have to be walking as much as possible, whether it's clicking every tile, control walking. I would just click every tile so I knew exactly where I was moving at every given moment. And it's pretty much just an extended team fight for bloat. That's yeah, all. that's not too There's much. There's really nothing else I can add yeah, to this one. Yeah, like, just energy management. And don't do that. <laughs> yeah, not get hit by a fly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So idealistically, you can tank like five flies, but you, you don't want to take any damage in this room because it's a free room. You don't use any supplies in here, at least you shouldn't. But yeah, there isn't really no. anything add on to this room. Uh, I'm going to go back a little bit. One thing to mention about these chests right here, the points you get are completely random. Which Outside sucks. Certain, it says, yeah, if you have no deaths, you'll get anywhere between 10 and 13 points. It's completely random. Here I got a good one and I got 12. So what I purchased from every Not even most ideal. Potions and two sharks every time. Two prayer potions just to get through the Nalicus room, so I don't have to dip into these, which cost more points in <clears> the chest, and two sharks for combo food for when the columns in the Nalicus room go down. And yeah, this one is wild. Here. This I got from Exact. This setup. Uh huh. So each tile has a different meaning to me. This one right here is where I would like kind of default to standing for most parts of the room, because you won't get hit by any explosions for Nalicus that are here or here, unless they're like kind of shuffling back and forth because they can't get in to attack the pillar. But you look out for that. It looks like I was just drinking right there. <laughs> uh, this one, this is just like the circle you run through. Remember the windmill we talked about? We yeah, yeah, okay. So the ones on the sides are the windmill running. Yeah. Which you'll explain a bit later yeah. when he gets to that point. What yeah, about the two in the middle? Uh, the two in the middle we'll get to. Don't worry, it'll come all up right. in like two minutes. Okay. So the, the cycle for this room, all Nylocus that spawn are scheduled to do the same exact thing every single run. Nothing changes. Yeah, matter of memorization. Exactly. So, so had you on that set was it set to attack you? So you just remember every single cycle, which took yeah. A so while. so that you remember it pretty much by heart yeah, at this, this one point. aggro's to you. Yeah, you're gonna see a big blue one come out here. That one's gonna be aggro to me, and the green following it is aggro as well. But so it's kind of like Sora, you know, through. you gotta memorize the rotations. <laughs> yeah, except multiply it by like four hundred. <laughs> yeah, except on steroids. Yeah, outside of like remembering these, your default is just protect all the columns as best you can, but mainly prioritize one. So for my runs, I protect this one right here. Uh, to compare to exact, he cl he likes to protect this one, but yeah. he uses a different strategy than I typically use. Yeah, this one, there's a lot of ways to go about it, mm -hmm. nuance-wise. Yeah. And outside of me protecting it, I'll just like do a circle of barrages and hit every single column as best I can. Yeah, so the next one, there's a small Nihilacus on each side, green ones that attack me. Uh, the next one, a small blue one right here, and the big blue one are aggro to me. So it's just being prepared for everything that comes out, minimizing yeah. your damage so you don't spend that much time casting Blood Barrage. You spend more time clearing out things or freezing things on the columns so you can actually survive to the end. That's another little trick right there for that tile. You stand there until the two small melees after that wave come out, walk south one when they get close to you, and you can just sight them. Yeah. It's just like other tiny things that kind of add up to the course of the run. Uh, this will be just standing in the middle to prep for this. I can get them off tick there. Yeah, this is the one. So this is the spot I stand on right here. At this particular wave, when this one on the east is aggro to you, you freeze it in place and stand on the other one. So now he can't attack you, and he's stuck there until he detonates. Yeah, so you're going to start freezing columns. And now I'm going to do things in a very set specific way. Freeze that, clear the two melees, and then start clearing out the blues that are aggro to you. And there's another blue back there that I'm going to try to freeze, hoping like you know, my rolls are good, and I actually don't splash on things and be able to one-shot the things that are aggro to me. So if you freeze him at the right time, he'll blow up before he even gets to you. That one holds the other ones at pace. And then he'll detonate. And now these ones fall into line. You want to freeze the first in the Congo line so everything else gets trapped behind it, so you have time to just kind of yeah. work with what you're doing. Yeah, you're, you're, you're freezing them to create obstacles for the yeah. crabs. Yeah, and if you play the rest of the room nicely, then you'll have time before the columns go down to get yourself back to full after clearing all that out. And this is where the fun starts to happen. I think yeah, this, this is the madness part here. First. Yep. Alright, so yeah, the southwest one went down. Don't have to eat just yet. 
I'm trying to delay these two so they gap out between each other so I don't have a stack to deal with. Yeah, so they stagger. Yeah, but they they stacked out anyway, but I was high enough HP to tank it. Yeah, like if, if three least. all goes at the same time, you're pretty much done. But two, if you're confident, you know, 80 plus HP. Yeah, so this is me just doing the circle around so I can just be away from them when they detonate. Because when they detonate, they stall for a second, and then they blow up. So you just want to be moving at all times so you'll be away from that. And yeah, what's right. yeah, you're stalling the ones that are attacking the remaining pillar as well? Yeah. And like I said, everything brush. here is scheduled to do something. The only thing that's random about this room is what color Nihilus you get from the big ones. Yeah, that's the, the, only the thing boss. That's random about this. So there, I auto attack that one. So oh, I you're talking the about the big Nilo minions. Yeah. yeah. As you saw, I auto attacked it there with the uh, code I won, just so I can get the wrong style, so I could freeze it and then just sap it for HP right there. And so I wanted to get as much HP before the boss fight as I possibly could, so I didn't have to dip into my supplies. But I think this boss fight actually went pretty solid. I don't think I had to really drink any brews from it. Just, like, yeah, that one looked really good, here. though. Yeah, nothing really changes about no this No close fight. call this time, from yeah. what I usually would see. Mm -hmm. The only thing that really changes is I kind of just, like, default set up for Mage with my switches. Like, just putting on Kodai and Ellie, and then, if anything else, I just put on the right weapon after putting on the right prayer. And for Mage, I take off, obviously, the Serp Helm and the Bandos chest plate since they were close next to each other. Very easy to execute. And, yeah, the rest of the fight, you just kind of beat it down. There's not really much strategy to it. It looks like I didn't use any supplies either, so that was a really good Nihilo boss. Uh, Dark Beast is another really dry boss. Uh, its strategy is obviously different from teams, because you have to tank every ball by yourself, and if you've seen a run of Wooks doing it before, you have to tick eat all of them. Except for the first one. Yeah, because you're full HP pretty much. Yeah, so to preserve prayer, you kind of just get yourself timed up, as you see me doing right here. Turn your prayer on as soon as you see his head bob. And then clip him immediately after. Turn it off, walk back one step so he can never melee you. So, magic attacks can always be fully blocked if you've got the prayer up. Melee attacks can still hit you for half damage, so you've got to do this. Let me get to like one ball so I can demonstrate like what the timing is for it. So, perfect. You get some time, put on Mage Prayer. And the moment you click on this is when you see him bobbing his head. That's when you click on the suite. So, you can take it. So, if you ever want to try this at home, show it off to your friends. There you go. Yeah, that's a great indicator, visual indicator. It's the only reason I was able to pull this room off when, you know that world lag spike happens? Where the world freezes, but, like, projectiles still move around? Yeah. That happened when there was a ball coming towards me. Like, the world just froze for a few seconds. And then it would, like, get onto me, and it just disappeared. But it wasn't actually there yet, so I just rely on his movements. And I got it right. So, that's the visual indicator you use. So, for the maze, all I do is just run across the entire dance floor, put on redemption. I get my free uh, health back. Just drink a nice dose of prayer potion to get myself back up. And screenshot the maze as I'm running across it, and then I'll just mark it with rune light. Yeah, so I just mark every single tile for every turn, and then just run across the maze. And if you notice, you get a maze that dumps you right in front of the boss, you've got to eat to at least 31 HP, because his max, I believe, is 30. With you, if he melees you with protect melee on. And you don't want that happening. You know, I'm killing you that way. Yeah, but this one I could get out without being in front of him. Just corner walk to there, and we got gap even if it turned off right away. So I would just take my time getting back into position. Looks like I have a ball coming my way. Yeah, Ember misses. What else is new? But yeah, you, we can't hear it. But you know, the game sounds. He used that cue for the ball. Yeah, when you game can't sounds see up it. a little bit. Like yeah. you'll just hear the sizzling happen and then I'll know I don't have to pull off at this point. Like right there, I heard it go yeah. off. So I'm going to be filling up my inventory best I can. So the ideal inventory going in for this for me would be obviously my three super combats, four completely filled super stores, ten completely filled brews, and six prayer potions. So one super store can actually be flexed into using on the Zarpus room. If I had like a bad Zarpus, a Dragon Warhammer miss, my DPS just sucked overall, what have you. It could be flexed around. And the prayer potions are just for Zarpus itself. So, six prayer potions. And it looks like I have a ton of points left over for absolutely no reason. So I'm actually leaving points behind here. Because there's pretty much no purpose. Or I'm just getting more super restores for the weird flex, it looks like. And it looks like I'm going to be brewing to over max right before this fight as well. Because you have some extra pots. Yeah, may as well. 
that's a prime, you know, setup right there for you right now. Maxed yep, out. And then, yep, then we got Zarpus Room, the one that changes a lot. Yeah, now, that one's wild. In total. So you're going to see me counting out loud here. Well, in game out loud. Just kind of to keep track to myself how many events have happened so I know when I don't have to worry about any more getting on, when I know when to position, drink a potion, whatever. I see you type too. I yeah, think I saw. That's me just typing it so I have a visual on it and so I can keep track because counting is very hard for me. Yeah, man. Hydro taught me how to count at three. It took a lot. It took a while. Difficult. It's actually difficult. Yeah, so I'm also flicking rapid heal so my HP is not going to fall below 115, so I'll have as much as possible because your HP actually does matter. Even though you're using redemption method, just for the like rotation you're going to do in a circle, which you'll see shortly, actually does matter quite a bit. It'll give you some more time outside. Put my piety on and start with the scythe right here. Hover your mouse over him. As soon as you see in the top left that you have the attack option, click immediately. So you get the one attack. Switch to Dragon Warhammer, spec it, and then walk back immediately when you see the experience drop and then get into this rhythm. Yeah, you it's gotta like, like walk a, back and forth twice, right? Type of idea. Yeah, it's pretty much Verzix rhythm that you would use if you had a scythe. But with less room for effort, because there's only 12 squares you can stand next to him and do the walk under method, which is the ones in between the little X that I have marked out right here. Got that design from Exact, thank you very much. And it's all about just like knowing what tech you're on. Like you have to, as nerdy as it sounds, you have to count and keep the track in your head. Yeah, or do enough so times just, that it's, you know, rhythmic. It kind of just becomes integrated in your head. But like I said, there's 12 spots. One just got taken up that's unlucky. Like you can't control where the random splats are going to go. Now, normally when you do Zarpas on a three man or higher, the splats will go to your teammates. If you've got less people, the ones that don't go to teammates go to random squares that aren't taken up by Miasma. Yeah, so it's quite RNG. See, my west side, which I hadn't even touched yet, is already starting to look a little, a little junky. And like I said, there's not really anything you can do about that. Yeah, would you say at this point, for you, is Sarpis failable just because if you can't land a Warhammer spec enough times, it might screw you over? Uh, it's still completable. It, you just have to get lucky with the scythe that's outside of that. All right, so it looks like I screwed up a bit right there. Got the yeah, wrong rhythm. missed the rhythm. Yeah, so we just start doing this right here. I do have room over here to like run off if I need to. But you need to save it. Point, if I notice my supplies are going down. But here it's just like maintaining the rhythm. Keep my redemption up. My run energy is running low as well. So no matter what, I would have had to start doing this shortly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so like, how do you get into it, you know? The transition to that. What's the timing exactly? Like, uh, what visual cue do you tell yourself, okay, I can go under it and start the redemption method? I keep an eye on my prayer points and my run energy. If any of them get like, you know, low, we're talking like around five run energy just to be safe. And then around, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, more like, how do you get into it without fucking it up? That's what I mean. Uh, you just invert it. So where you'd run off, you walk under instead and it keeps the same track. So as far as audio cues for when you're running around in a circle, hate those patterns. so you hear the squeak right there. Once you hear the squeak, you click off. Fuck off already, mate. Do I kiss my mother with that mouth? All right. So you hear the squeak right yeah. there. And yeah, explain why you have to do the stall exactly. Yeah, if you don't do the method, the room's going to fill up with miasma. There's actually a clip I can demonstrate. Yeah, the room <laughs> will look a bit like this. <laughs> and you notice he's on 25%, and that's with me doing a lot of uh, redemption run under method, but this is like in the early stages of me learning the room. And yeah, it'll start looking like that. You can't clear it. Mm, that's not how it works. Yep, so at this point I'm noticing, well, I screwed up right there. I clicked on the bat instead of running under. I just yep. got back into the room stepping off for a second. Just listen for the audio cue, get back into rhythm. There's still two spots right there, which is what I'm going to be running to. You still got a little bit of just prayer. Under and back into rhythm. So here I don't really have to fill in like these squares, which you're able to do if you run correctly. There are methods for it. But I notice like how much supplies I have. I don't need to. I can kind of just brute force it down. And get it to under the correct amount of HP where he'll just go into phase three. I don't have to worry about him splatting out anymore. Yep. I see you have five restores ish. Yeah. Like I said, I only really need three realistically for the Verzik fight, plus maybe like an extra dose or something. So me dipping to this fifth one doesn't matter. Even the fourth one doesn't really matter too much, but he should phase very shortly. Yeah. yeah. Ideally. 
How many Warhammers minimum would you want? At least one. And then if you need to, you can just switch into it later. Like, I could have switched into it at any point there, but I saw how fast he was going down, like, the pace of it. I'm like, I don't really need to, like, just switch into it. There's not really much point. There's not really anything for me to gain from it. So, like, yeah. it's advice to do it, but I saw the pace of it. I knew where it was going because I've done this so many times. I'm like, I really don't need to, like, lose DPS from switching it, maybe being a little slow with the switch, putting out a special bar, maybe losing the rhythm along the way. I'm like, I'll just keep the rhythm, keep the pace. And just play it the safe way. So for phase three, it's exactly the same. Just don't hit him when he's looking at you. So I just do one scythe hit for every rotation just to be safe. I think I'm like looking around and studying like where I screwed up and like where I could have saved more time. Like here, there's even space for me to like mess around with his miasma attacks and like step off. Yeah, no, that's pretty clean this one. for the most part. Yeah, a lot of space yeah, left over. Of, yeah, the rest of it is just chopping him down, get him to zero. Go pick up my brew that I left in the other room in there. We've got four and a quarter stores. That's and brews. Ideal. Beautiful supplies. Absolutely beautiful supplies. This and man's got... mastered at this point. <laughs> yeah, and then we've got Versic, the final boss. Uh, phase one doesn't really change too much. Me drinking again, typical. Okay, here we go. So yeah, the stuff fight starts exactly the same way. And kind of goes the same way for phase one. It's literally no change to it. Uh, the only thing I do, this doesn't exactly matter too much from the things like I've shot back with other people. Like, it's about the same DPS, but we feel that Scythe is slightly faster than using the staff. So we'll do one staff immediately after pulling out of the spot, and then click on here as soon as we get the experience drop. Switch to the Scythe, and then attack it twice and walk back. And it works out in perfect rhythm. But that only applies to the first two columns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we all kind of follow the same path for, like, which columns we run to, because it's probably the most optimal DPS you're getting in between transitioning in between the two. So we'll go south from that one, and then move over to the northeast one, and then move south from there, and then just, by that, that by the time this one should be going down, she should be dead. And if not, then you just run to the third pillar on the south, and wait for your Yeah, can you uh, fast forward to, like, the middle pillars? Yeah, and then there's another front pillar. We move down to the other pillar. I think I had pretty good DPS on this one. I didn't take any blue ball hits either, which is nice. No random screw ups on my end. Was your HP above 99 the whole time? Uh, no, know? it was always 99 for this room. Yeah, so I dipped down to this one. One because... more shot would have killed it uh -huh. after that. So you just waiting so... for the spec? Yep, just waiting for spec. Because one more spec will kill her at 4% guaranteed, no matter what you roll. Yep, there's the spec. Finisher. Run back to a safe spot just in case. But you can stand right there for the middle column. Granted, it's still up. And then you see my tower markers right here. This line's just the safe Jesus line to Christ. start fighting her. That's <laughs> the amount of markers. Spider. Yeah. You'll notice I have like none of my melee gear on right now because I want maximum magic bonus for that fucker right there. Yep. Okay, so go go through the electricity. All right. We won't go through that one because I'm not needing it there, but the next one I have to. So the electricity can do a random amount of damage between, I believe, 45 and 50. In a solo, since there's nobody it can bounce to, it just hits you, and only you. So here I'm just like kind of getting the rhythm down, seeing where I am in the fight. Yeah, can you explain the attack timers? Yep. You know, like, so the order. So her auto attack timers are set. The only thing I can interrupt it is a Nilo spawning. It'll be four of the range attacks, like this little turnip mushroom chandeliers, whatever you want to call them, she chucks out. And then the fifth attack is always going to be an electric ball. The only thing that disrupts that is the spawning of the Nihilchus, the purple one and the like random colored one in the north, which, thank god, it always spawns up there in solos. Always predict that. And they'll just get wedged in between, so you can have like three range attacks, Nihilchus spawns, right after that will be the fourth range attack, and then another one. Right into the electric ball. So right there, she ended with electric. Let's attack one, two, three, four, and the next attack will be electricity. Just like that. So this is pretty much substandard. Just kill the purple as soon as it lands, go and DPS her for a little bit, and it's on average I think about 20 auto attacks she does before Nihilicus comes out again. It's not confirmed because it seems to be like a random amount between like 19 and 25, we're not sure. So after like you know a few cycles I kind of just run out to this line where it takes longer for projectiles to get to you, so it's a bit easier for me to tick eat the electricity. Basically what you're saying is after say you do like you, you know, you have a feeling that it's about 15 attacks deep. You're just gonna, you know, set off to the side and just prepare for the spawn. 
And you'll notice I take off all the melee gear. Like, I just don't have Bando's chestplate on right now. Like, the one strength bonus isn't that much of an issue for me. I kind of just want less to deal with while I'm setting up for other phases. Like, I'll take that off. I yeah. do set auto cast to that just in case the first magic attack lands, or but Fails. slashes. Yeah. So at least I'll automatically be casting another one in case I need to hover my inventory for sweet so there's less actions for me to perform. Here's an interesting one. So yeah. since I knew the range of the ball right there, like where I could fly from here, I kind of had to wing this one a little bit because the yeah. first freeze didn't land. I knew the electric ball was coming out. I'm like, yeah, so you really I didn't have so much time. There. So yeah. this just came down to me remembering everything I could about the fight. Yeah. So you know kept my pace paid attention to everything that was going so, on so uh the fur further distance lets you uh gives you more time for the take eat yeah this one was a decent timer though because it would like land and do the damage to you at the same time that you'd be casting another attack so you just eat the tick before that that's yeah. all it is yeah so so that's a really it's ideal entire phase your hp's yeah. here so one mistake at any point you just die so yeah. it's a lot of stress yeah so giving yourself that distance really, you know, makes it a, a lot better for you to time. I can thank Exec for trying this out and like showing it to me first. I was like, wow, this is so much easier than uh. Than yeah, because like when you're closer, yeah, because when you're closer, man, that shit is so fast. It's like yeah, it's twice instant. as fast or something compared to your distance. Maybe three yeah. times even. There is an audio cue for when you're attacking her for this electric ball, which I don't think there is sound at this point. No, it got copyright muted. Yeah. But there is an audio cue. So when she attacks you with the electric ball, uh, you'll hear sound to it. You would eat it the moment you hear silence. Like as soon as the sound for the electric ball stops, yeah, it's like, you it? and it ticks. Yeah. Yep. And then, that, like, there's like a pause, I remember that. Yep. But this one you can kind of eye out. Like once it's in between these two, if I've got the camera at this angle, I know that's when I have to eat, but I didn't need that crutch anymore once I kind of started getting a feel for like where it was and where I'd have to eat. You notice I always walk to this square. Because no matter where you're standing, if you're walking in a triangle right here, as long as you don't pass this square to the east, as long as you don't stand here, if you run to this square, and you cast freeze on this square, then the turnips will actually not go here. They'll either register here, here, or here, and that's where they'll go. So that's why I have this one marked, that's why I have that one marked as well, in case I had to run west for whatever god-given reason. Wait, can you just explain that again? Limits. Uh, I can so explain it a bit more. you don't so want to go too far, up. is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, you don't want to go too far to the point where the electric ball will be on a different timer, where it will recognize you as being further away than this line would present. Yeah. So, these are the three squares I walk between. So I'm always on a different square. That you, that's not going to hit me. I can move in sequence if I lose count, since I can't count to five. Alright, so you say I walk over there. If I moved a tick earlier, the turnip would have landed here instead. As long as you path to that square, it's not going to Yeah, okay, me. okay. So you, you can... Kind of hurt where the oh, nice hourly world lag. Yeah, so you, so you can hurt it basically. Yep. Yes, yeah, so you can kind of predict where it's going to be, and just time it out, and then you can get to there. You can freeze it. You don't have to really waste too much time making sure you're safe because you know you're going to be safe if you walk to that square within that time frame of her casting the purple Nilo. And yeah, this part's exactly the same for anybody who uses Scythe and Verzik. Not much changes from this, except for the blue ball that comes out right here. Yeah, you have to be counting every time while you're doing this. Yeah, and then this fight kind of continues on like this for quite a while. You get yeah, I think we've here. dissected this stage. Now we can probably move over to the purple face, purple healer face. Yep, yeah, that's all this is. It's everything you saw right there, but minus me auto-attacking over at the scythe. It's just a waiting game from here on out. All right, so we're down to the last one right here. So each purple Nilo does about 2.6 to 2.7% damage to her. Granted, she hasn't taken any heals from it, so... One thing I want to do, and it's another strategy that Exact showed me, thank you to him, is putting on Redemption and taking damage from the Electric Ball to trigger the Redemption so you heal up a bit more, and then pushing her into Red Phase when she's on very low percent, like, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, what have you, and just using that time when she's, like, you know, invulnerable, she'll heal if you attack her, just using that time to heal up a bit yourself. So you can be more prepared for the fight. So I intentionally let it heal her a little bit here to get her a little above that threshold mark. So you get her down to 0.8% there. Here comes the ball. Redemption it. Going for the attack. And surprisingly, I hit enough to face her right there. But I got some free HP from Redemption. Yeah, that's clutch. Because you have extra prayer anyway, so it worked out yep. well for you. Yeah. And the only thing that really changes about this fight is it's just three times longer compared to a three-man. 
and you don't typically freeze the Nilocus that spawned from her. You just yeah, kind of you just caught a corner, juke it, diagonal yeah, you do. Yeah, and for the first one, you can just if you kept her in the same spot, you can like walk on her like that, and it'll get juked. See, so I took no damage from it, but I took twenty five from not switching my prayer for her. Yep. And yeah, a lot of this fight's the same. You moving around the map throughout the fight? Do you have like a systematic approach? Uh, not particularly. I want to try and draw her away from the center before web phase of schedules this happen, so I can heal up, maybe eat a few sweets, so I can get some run energy in there. That's about it. Uh, for yellow and green ball, not really, because even if you start in this corner of the room for yellow, you can still reach the corner, since you can just zoom out and see the entire room, and you're not fighting other people for yellows. There's no deliberating like who gets which spot. You just know you go to it. Yeah. So you'll always reach it in time. There's plenty of time for you to get to it. And that one spawned there, so easy. Just combo eat a little bit, get some run energy with the sweets, be able to click on them, get some stats back, and you get one auto attack on her after the yellow is done. And then we move on to green ball. Like, there are ways to get some more HP out of the green ball. If you're between, I think, 75 and 83 HP, you can just Redemption when it comes out and get some cheeky hit points back. But yeah, that, I mean, you, you, didn't, you didn't need that. that. You did not need that at all. No, it's just a little extra to get a more, bit more bang for your buck. You see, I didn't really opt for that right there. Yeah, because the thing is, is that if you're full HP, after the green ball, you'll still have, like, 40 HP. Mm -hmm. Which is safer than trying to Redemption at such a low HP. And having no prayer. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you could totally do that. What? It's just another option that's there. All right, so now Nalakus has just spawned in the north corner. I've got to set up for that. I take a melee there because I'm amazing at the game. All right, so juke this one out. I think I take seven damage here because I was just a little too close to it, but still cleared it out. I'm trying yeah. to lure her away a little bit. Uh, don't get that good of a lore on her. She's still pretty close to the center. And she's going to start right away before I even get to, like, Yeah. Start. I don't get in position right here to where I'd want to start web phase. I'm not in, like, the center of yeah, these, which it's a is, bit like, off. where I like being. Yeah. So if I had, like, attacked there, I would have gotten webbed at this point. I just kind of pull off and I don't chance anything. And, like, I'd rather just... Yeah, no, it was bad. It was bad. So start healing up a little bit. You learn from your experience. <laughs> yeah, just get the combo weeds in there. Start setting back up back into the fight the old phase is going to be next where she'll panel i said nothing changes from there mm -hmm. it's only really green ball like you don't ideally you don't want to like how many green balls are you willing to tank uh the most you want to tank is three if you get into the fourth one then the fight has gone on for way too long yeah at that point, you're okay. probably already dead yeah three is the max yeah, so I use that time, obviously, to get my run energy back to 100, so I don't have much to worry about, because Sweets will still slow down your attack timer. It acts yeah, like yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like Bruce, where it doesn't interrupt Yeah, you can't timer. eat in the middle of the fight, only when there's off time. So yeah, you don't lose fight. any DPS. Yep, yeah, just standard Versic fighting right here. And it's about 32%, so it's on really good pace right now. The most ideal time to get a purple tornado to happen is when she's in the middle of web phase, like right at the start of web phase. So that was my main goal, like when to phase her. So we're on really good pace for it right now. She's about to enter another Nalakus phase. Yep, and then after that, you're almost there. Mm -hmm. There's a standard like uh, Versa kiting. I could be kiting her like towards the center of the room, but you know anywhere works. I just like her away from the north center area, so I have more time to respond yep. to Nal. And get ready for the juke. Just, just yep, standard juke right there. Alright, so I use this time to lure her away a little bit. Don't really have to worry about TPS too much because she's on 22%, so just about ready to phase. And there we go. Use my sweets, get my energy as high as I can, and then start it up. Drink the potions in between. You know, take the standard web path for solo. Yeah, take some... No, now you, you don't have to... So you add a little bit more time so that web won't trip me up when I walk over it right there. Or won't, like, uh, do that bug Yeah, where you're doing, like, the diagonal-ish running yeah, yeah just it's like, like a diagonal circular, circular kiting you know yeah and yeah. it just comes down to standard phase three fighting except you're the tank you're not freezing yes it. yep another great moment by me take a melee attack never punish how many did you take at that there's like three so far uh, there's two melee attacks total one hit an 18 one hit a six but i've got more than enough bruise to facilitate it yeah this yeah, one so requires really perfect timing right there 
Honestly, nice. easier in a solo because you're not arguing with your teammates over which yeah, one you're Yeah, you can take. just focus, lock on in one of them. Yeah, so it's getting still, to a good rhythm. Still, quite, quite the, going. Yeah, quite the hairy one. A lot can go wrong in the last 25%. It's been a while, was yep. it? 30%? 30... Give him some DPS right there. It's 20%. Yeah, 20%. Give him a DPS right there to make yeah. sure it hit the tornado. We're almost there. She's on 20%. Yeah, you Next don't want to get stacked by that. It's so easy to get one tick by that combo. Yep. And there she goes. She's down. Yo, yo, you gotta, you gotta play the, the reaction, man, with the sound on, dude. <laughs> yeah, you can go watch that yourself. You <laughs> yeah, watch that on Twitch.tv slash a cold one. Free advertising. Yeah, you can go click the Twitter clip for that. Mm -hmm. Add that to the view count, if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah, there you go. There's the uh, the completion. Welcome, zoom in so I don't see the purple chest that's uh, ahead of me. Didn't want to spoil the surprise for myself. Kind of bask in my moment right here. Just enjoy the fact that I can finally play the game again. Great times. Great times. Yep. Yeah. Of course, I got to check and see who the MVP was for that raid. Very important. Got to make sure I was top dog of the team. I got to say, it took it took a lot of time for this man. Like, do you kind of have an idea how much time attempts, you know, like costs, supplies, and stuff it took for you to get all of this done? Uh, I can sum up for you how many sweets it took me. So I had to think about thirteen hundred sweets in my bank before I started even making attempts on this. Maybe a bit more, maybe like 1400, somewhere around that area. And at the time of me getting through phase two, like getting into it and like working on phase two, trying to get that down, I actually ran out of sweets. Funny enough, I completely ran out of sweets and I had to go grind some more. Since mm -hmm. the collection log update, I had to harvest about a thousand sweets more just to get through the completed run. And I've got about 200 in my bank right now. So yeah. That's Grinding a lot. purple sweets isn't fun at all. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those obscure grinds I've ever It's done. a lot more annoying on the Iron Man, just because he had to prep all the blood runes and stuff. Ugh. Yeah, how many uh, like attempts overall? The ones uh, that Verzic you consider an, an actual attempt? Uh, Verzic P2 attempts, probably about like 25-ish maybe, that I got to Verzic P2. At least uh, three times I got to Verzic P3, and then a bunch of other periodic deaths along the way. Uh, some of the barriers I had was Nylocus Room was very difficult at first until I learned the fundamentals behind it, like learning the order they come out, learning my priorities, learning what I had to do. Uh, Zarpus was another big barrier, just getting that timing down, and then of course the Verzik fight itself was surprisingly more difficult than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, freaking take eating. There's a whole art to it. It was just stressful. Yeah, it takes so long, goddamn. I think I think that, that about wraps it up though, you know, it's really enlightening. I guess any questions about T.O.P. soloing, you can just leave it on the YouTube comments or ask him directly on uh, Twitter or Twitch. Yeah, sure that. I, I don't look at YouTube. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll have a cold one back again for another dual video on some things, you know, on some shenanigans like dead blocks maybe. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, though. Thank you and bye.